Wow, that was kind of over the top. I'll take it. <laughs> My uh, seatmate, Dr. Karen Wheeler, said, how did you get from Arkansas with a history degree to the moonshot? And I said, answer your phone. <laughs> I was walking down the street in New York. I had just finished six months of chemotherapy. And my phone rang and someone said, Vice President Biden would like to meet with you in the morning to talk to you about the cancer moonshot. And I said, gosh, I'm in New York and I have an appointment with my leukemia doctor tomorrow morning. Because they didn't know I'd had leukemia and everything worked out fine. And they said, okay, well, we'll do it another time. And I hung up and I thought, what am I, stupid? <laughs> and so I called my doctor and I said, Dr. Tallman, I just got this call to go to Washington to talk about the moonshot, but I'm supposed to see you tomorrow. And he said, what are you, stupid? <laughs> and that's how I got there. Let me start by thanking Jim Zogby and Maya Berry and their team who've been so kind to my family and me. And, and let me start at the beginning and thank my mother, Marcella, Marietta, Kalil, Simon, from, her parents are from Zachley. Stand up, mother. Mom is, uh, mom is 94, and uh, she's on fewer medicines than I am. And when they asked, when I, when, uh, when they told me this was going to happen, I learned about it, and I told my mother several months ago, she said, can they speed it up? <laughs> I also want to share this award with another public servant. There are people who do incredible public service every day whom no one celebrates. They don't have award galas. They seldom, if ever, are in the spotlight. But they do something wonderful every day. They help young children learn a new language, so they can navigate life in their new home of America. And that person is my sister, Janice Simon Bobo. <laughs> who has uh, devoted her life to teaching English as a second language to children of immigrants. Sister, I love you. I honor the work you do. You've helped thousands of children make this country their home. And I want to thank my wife, Margot Reed, and my daughter, Kalil Simon, and my son, Reed, who called me this morning from Hyderabad and said, remember that Little League game you missed because you were on the campaign with Al Gore? Uh, no, children will follow their parents. My son's in India, but they have borne with grace and understanding the burden of the unscripted, unpredictable life I have lived in public service, working with people who expect you to be available at all times and at all places. Your love has gotten me through some exhausting experiences I could not have done without you. A century ago, my grandfather, Faris Sama and Saliba, immigrated here from Lebanon. He walked from New York to Georgia, buying and selling goods along the way, where he met and married my grandmother, Marian Najim, also from Tigrin, Lebanon. He became a successful merchant and brought his youngest brother, Thomas, and his brother's wife over from Lebanon to Georgia. At the outbreak of World War I, a dispute between Thomas and the local vigilantes led to a 12-hour gun battle in which four vigilantes were killed, but not before they killed Thomas, his wife, wounded my grandfather, and burned down their store. Following this horrific event, Ferris moved my father and his siblings to Arkansas where he lived his life and where I was born and raised. What was his reaction to this tragedy? First, he never mentioned it. I only learned about it when I visited Lebanon just after he had died. But secondly, he became involved in civic affairs and never missed a local city council meeting for 40 years, but he never ran for office because he didn't want anybody else telling him what to do. He visited the Roosevelt White House where he argued for price supports for cotton during the Depression to help save the South. A story he told me and my mother to, who, to whom uh, who suffered through it every weekend 
after every family dinner on Sunday afternoon. When the Arab American Institute staff asked me when I felt I had made it as an Arab American in public service, I said without hesitation that when I was working for Vice President Gore and I addressed a group of Lebanese immigrants in the White House and I told them that story, I looked out at the men and the women who were tearing up and I realized they were all my grandfather. And here I was, an official at the White House, because of the sacrifices they had made, and I was truly humbled and proud to be who I am and to do what I do. And for that, I want to thank Al Gore, who hired me after meeting me once, and for Joe Biden, who hired me after meeting me once, and my congressional bosses, Harold Volkmer of Missouri and Robert Rowe of New Jersey, who hired me after meeting me once. There's a theme here. <laughs> Their faith in me allowed me to fulfill a dream that had its roots in the terraced landscape of Lebanon and its fruit in whatever work I have done that has helped other people. Last night, I was looking at some historical family documents some people apparently find very threatening. The citizenship application of Ferris and Marion. We must keep the door to citizenship open to honor those who suffered so much to reach that door. And if my public service stands for anything, it stands for this. We are a great nation because of that open door. We will never be a great nation because of a wall. Thank you so much. <laughs>